The best of ACS. Richard Zoglin is a journalist, he's an author, he's in studio, Elvis in Vegas, how the king reinvented the Las Vegas show. It's available now on Amazon, you can bookmark us and click on through as well. And uh, also, I guess, wrote a book book on Bob Hope as well, so I'm interested in both those yeah. guys. They seem pretty different. Yeah, they are, but they were both guys... Uh, Bob Hope had not had a major biography done on him, and I thought he was re- it was really needed in the same way that Elvis's Vegas years, I think, needed a new perspective because although people have written about Elvis a lot and Elvis is, we all know, the declining years in Vegas and the big jumpsuit and mm-hmm. everything, I wanted to remind people that that comeback show in 69 was really one of the great, great moments of his career. Was he, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, when he was at the height of it, I think the reason he became a sort of a punchline is because when he was at the height of his powers, he was really above everyone else out there. I mean, the yeah. look, the sound, the movement, yeah. like, I mean, when he was mm-hmm. firing on all cylinders, when he's in that leather, black leather suit and his thin and he's tan and his hair's mm-hmm. pulled back, like, Hips I mean, he's moving. really just... Right. Leaps and bounds above anything else out there. And also, people don't realize, through the entire 1960s, he was doing no live performing. He hadn't. He did a couple of uh, benefit concerts in 1961, and then it was nothing, just those lousy movies mm-hmm. and uh, recordings. And, you know, the songs weren't making the charts anymore, and it was time for him to return. Was uh, Colonel Tom, you know, we got a movie coming up, we're talking about him. Was Turtle, uh, Colonel Tom, I guess he was addicted to gambling. I, I don't know, but he, was he, he was. an evil guy? No, I think he was a complex guy. I think there's certainly he made some wrong calls in Elvis's career. I mean, to pull him from live performing and have him do movies well, you know, it turned out to be a wrong decision. But, you know, he gets a lot of credit. First of all, he created Elvis's star. I mean, stardom in the 50s. A lot of that was uh, the colonel's very smart management of his career. And also, when he was, was time to return to live performing, first of all, it was the NBC comeback special, the famous comeback right. special at the end of 68. People suddenly saw him in that black leather suit, and, and wow, he could still perform. He was still dynamic. And then, you know, the Vegas comeback, you know, well, it was a place where he really – he knew Vegas, and uh, it may have seemed an odd choice for him, but it was, uh, it was the way to showcase his return. Was Elvis smart? I mean, I'm assuming he wasn't highly educated, but would you call him a smart guy, or would you call him just full of, like, instinct? You know what? Well, he was full of instinct, and he was he was great on sort of you know how managing his own uh, performances. But uh, I think he was a smart guy. People, you know, people liked Elvis a lot. He was well read. He read a lot. He listened to people. He was interested in people. He was he was I think amazingly down to earth too for a guy who had you know the kind of stardom and you know the crazy frenzy around him in the fifties that no one had ever had before. And uh, I think he. Uh, I'm surprised he stayed as sane as he did for as long as he did, frankly. (laughs) Did uh, the colonel outlived him by how many years? Uh, At least uh, probably a couple dozen or 20 years. I'm not sure exactly when the colonel died. Did the colonel die with anything or did he? Yeah, yeah, he died. He he stayed in Las Vegas, you know. He lived in Las Vegas. And his widow is still there. I talked to her. Really? Second second wife, younger wife that he... uh, he married uh, around in the 70s. 20 years later, according to uh, my screens. Okay. I outlived him for 20 years. 20 was he years. older? Yeah. He was older. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's always weird. But uh, <laughs> he goes on for another 20 years. His wife is still alive. Yes. He, I heard uh, he was taking 50%. Is that true? Well, yeah. He had a deal. It was like business partners with Elvis. And so he took 50%. It was not a good arrangement for Elvis. <laughs> the normal manager's 15 and maybe he got dra- dropped down mm. to 10, I, I think. Uh, but th- th- to let people know, on the other hand, uh, he did make him. On the other hand, he did everything. Elvis didn't have a separate uh, you know, agent, lawyer, the colonel was the manager, agent, everything. So, uh, you know, it was a bad deal, but maybe not quite as bad. as you Was the said. colonel – I there's a thing that can happen. Uh, it happened to me on a, on a small scale. Uh, it, it happens. It's, it happens that the people are getting a percentage. You know, they're getting 15%. And so they go, 
hey, every single weekend I got you booked to go out and play a college or whatever. And you go, I work all week. And they go, yeah, but I got you booked to play all these shows because they're home. Right. And right. You're, getting, you're going to the airport yeah. every single weekend. And there's a little bit of a danger of that because I get it. Wouldn't it be nice to get paid while you yeah. stayed at home and somebody <laughs> went out on the road and yeah. you got 15% of whatever they made on the whatever was but at a certain point the, the mule breaks down well that's what happened with Elvis in the 70s uh the colonel worked him to death i mean he was doing vegas shows twice a year four weeks at a time and seven nights a week not a night off two not two shows a night who does right. two shows a night anymore and then the tours, the touring, and it just, he was just grinded, ground down and bored. And uh, the colonel didn't, he, the colonel kind of went for the easy payday. In Hollywood in the 60s, he kept getting new movie contracts. He kept signing new movie contracts, even though uh, Elvis knew the movies were bad and was frustrated and bored. In the 70s, when the, the touring, you know, Elvis was doing great on tour and in Las Vegas, he was selling out every show. So why not keep doing it, not realizing that the artist he was managing was was bored to death? And well, there's a, a penny wise, pound foolish kind of thing that obviously he's the cash cow, but the cash cow dies in 1977. Yeah. You, you stop earning right. off him. So even though it'd be nice to book him every single night, and do two shows every single night, yeah. let the guy rest. Got to bleed maybe, him slow. Maybe he'll see his 50th birthday. Right. <laughs> if you do that. But speaking of that, the colonel, after Elvis died, was he entitled to anything? He must have had some contracts and some things, yeah. and there were I, multiple uh, records sold after he died and so on and so forth. Although, uh, you know, the colonel sold his record contract to RCA. I mean, the, all the record, everything happened since then was not, Elvis had nothing to do with it. They, they, he got nothing out of that. It was RCA that bought the whole catalog. The colonel in the 70s didn't think, would there be a market for Elvis songs 10, 20, 30 years from now? Mm. It was, it was not, not something he thought. So he made a lot of money. He sold the whole record catalog to RCA, and that was it. He made a lot, they made a lot of money off it, but what today do you, they're not getting anything. Well, I'll combine the two, like I've told on the show more than once it was the same way when guys won Le Mans with a car in the 60s and they were done with it like get yeah. rid of it i don't want it anymore yeah. phil specter to bring the music to the cars he had a daytona cobra that he bought and sold to it's like security guy for a thousand dollars that yeah. car's 40 million dollars today yeah. because he thought why would this be worth I could like yeah. you go. Oh, that's insane! But I, how insane is it? What is it's this over. old race car going to yeah. be worth in forty years? Right. And what's an Elvis song? What's Hound Dog going to be worth right. when everyone's right. driving around hovercrafts? <laughs> uh, right. But I get it. But now we know better. Yeah, and you, you also realize that back in the in the sixties when Elvis was getting ready to make his comeback, no one knew if rock if rock and roll was fairly young. No one knew if rock stars had any life after thirty. Mm. And that's why the Colonel put him into movies. He thought if you're gonna have a long career, you can't keep doing rock and roll. That's teenage music. Uh, you gotta do something else. And he he was making movies and the movies were making money, so that's why he did it. So people didn't you know, uh, the, there was no precedent. There was no model for a rock star over 30 continuing to perform. Of right. course, today we know you can go into your 70s. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, yes, go ahead. Well, one of the questions, my quick question is, did Elvis ever get mixed up with the mob out there in Vegas? It was uh, all mobbed up at that point. It was. And the colonel, one good thing about the colonel, he kept Elvis away from the mob. Hmm. He was very careful not even to let him get photographed with sort of mob-connected people. Now, the colonel, I, I think you couldn't be in Vegas at that time in the 60s and not have some dealings with the mob. Of course. But I don't think the colonel had any more than any, you know, mm. normal person there. Just transactional. Yeah. And uh, and he was careful. You know, he was always concerned that Elvis have this all-American good boy image. And that's why he made him go into the army. That's mm. why he wouldn't let him, uh, you know, escape the draft. He thought that would be bad for the image of a rock and roller in the 50s. Uh, he's going to serve his country. And the same thing with the mob. He didn't want him associated with the mob. Um, Bob Hope. I know that's not this book, but I'm, I'm still very – I'm kind of interested. Also, just the fact that anyone who travels through Toluca Lake knows just like how much real estate that guy 
bought in Toluca Lake, again, like the cars, like licensing, the, the catalog. The, the, oh, it's just a bunch of farmland and orange trees and walnut trees. For it's now. the San Fernando Valley. Like, it's not worth anything. God, what the acreage is in Toluca Lake, California now. Um, but what, do, what don't most of us know about Bob Hope? I don't know anything about Bob Hope. Is that the way he liked it? Well, Bob Hope, you know, was kind of the opposite of Elvis and, and, and the Colonel in that he was very forward thinking in his career. He was a guy. He was the first guy, I, I think, in Hollywood to really create himself as a brand. You know, Bob Hope, he wasn't just a movie star and a radio star. But uh, he, uh, he was uh, uh, he was known. At, he did the, obviously the USO tours. He had a newspaper column at one time. He wrote books. You know, he started writing started to write memoirs. Did he host the he was, Oscars a few times. And of course, the Oscars. Yeah. His fans were being Bob Hope. And so, and uh, you know, he was the one Hollywood star with a logo. That you know, the the, the sure. face, right. the kind of profile with the nose and the chin. So yeah. Bob Leno was, ripped that off. Uh-huh. By the way, I like Jay, but come on, who we kidding here? Jay? But uh, you know, he was very conscious of marketing himself as a brand and he was all you know also just one of the first guys uh, he was one of the smartest investors in hollywood and he bought up real estate so he was more than just a movie star radio star he was a full service hollywood star i remember as a kid going hey it's bob texco hope here (laughs) he actually he, he was a brand and he put the other brand in the middle of his brand Absolutely. And then, of course, the golf tournament. I mean, you know, he, he was the Bob Hope. Sure, uh, Dinosaur Hope. Classic. Uh. Knows it. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, – here's a weird question. It's not answerable, but I'm curious. How funny was Bob Hope? Was he an incredible businessman, actor, team of writers, shrewd guy? Mm-hmm. Or was he – uh, we know, I know from being in the comedy business that I can tell you that there are certain guys I know that are so naturally funny, doesn't make them rich or own any real estate in Toluca Lake, but that, that guy's a really funny guy. And then there are other guys who I won't mention who you go, that, well, that guy's not really that funny, but he's really good at shaping his career and he's rich because of it. But if you... If you just cut him open, he wouldn't bleed as much funny as the other guy, although the other guy is sleeping on his sofa. Uh, okay. The answer to that question is I think he was funny. He was. He definitely depended on writers. He was the old school uh, of comedians who, you know, very frankly and openly had writers. He would joke about them on the radio. He and fought her. jokes. And- yeah. So he, he didn't write his own stuff, but he he picked the jokes. He, sh- he edited the jokes, and he uh, delivered the jokes better than anybody else. Plus, um, off camera, I mean, you know, in person – all, all the people I talked to who knew him, writers, Larry Gelbart, for example, mm-hmm. said to me, uh, Bob Hope was funnier in person than he ever was on the air. I mean, he just had a natural humor in, in terms of, you know, just his talking with his staff. He was, I think he was a funny guy, even though. Was he, he was a right. nice guy? Would he, did he treat uh, people well? Well, uh, mm-hmm. that's a mixed, there's a mixed answer to that <laughs> oh, question. Oh, really? Uh, yes and hell yes? Uh, <laughs> you know, he was, some people didn't like him. He was, he could be cold. He could be, uh, he was had a big ego. He was uh, felt, uh, he was the biggest star, you know. He, he was above everybody else, so he was felt a little entitled, I would say. Did he have a bigger ego than someone like Elvis? Was Elvis more insecure? I think... Yes, I think Bob Hope had a bigger. It was more secure in himself than than Elvis. Elvis was always, he was rather modest about his fame, and he was un, always insecure. Yes, Bob Hope was a very self confident, positive, uh, optimistic guy. Elvis, you know, uh, inside with uh, you know having having his problems. I always have this theory about guys, and not so much with women. I think it's more with guys because. It's hard for a woman who doesn't look the part to go, I'm taking over Hollywood just because I'm this actress and I'm whatever. If you we're we're a little more aesthetic and if you don't look right, it's going to be hard. But I've known that guys, I always just call it personal momentum. As I think back on Bob Hope, he'd be out there on stage like preening. He would tell every joke (laughs) like it was the funniest thing anyone had ever said. And it was like so much personal momentum to him. And as humans, we're always attracted to those people. Yeah. The people that are, I, I think that's Trump's whole thing. He just bursts in the room and goes, we're number one, you're number one, I'm number one, he's number one, we're all going to be number one. And that's then right. he leaves and everyone goes, "I okay, yeah, good. Like there's a personal momentum that Bob Hope, now Elvis was, you know, dripping in talent. Yeah. 
Bob Hope, I feel like a lot of that was personal momentum. Like it, it, well, <laughs> I his would, posture was like he stood with his shoulders like pulled back, right. like his yes. chest was pushed forward. Like you're right, he knew, and he was also very good about seeing where show business was going. You know, he started out in vaudeville. He got into radio. Uh, he he, you know, he did he did a new kind of movie in comedy in, in uh, movie comedy. He was those road pictures with Bing Crosby. They were something kind of new in in uh, movie comedy. So Bob was, um, and then television. When television came along, a lot of the big radio stars like Bob Hope were afraid to go into television because they didn't want to damage their radio careers. <laughs> but Bob was willing to try whatever was was happening in, in show business. And, uh, you know, he was a very smart guy about his career, whereas Elvis was wasn't so much thinking about his career. He was thinking about his music. Well, I I, I imagine that the problem with the artists um you know, like, I don't know that Sasha Baron Cohen is thinking, shaping his career. You know, he's just wants his next art piece. You know what I mean? Like, I can think, think of those guys like an artist or it's like a Bob Hope's a little more of a businessman who's his business is comedy, but he's got a little more business right. in, his, in his brain. And yeah. Elvis probably just wants to get together with some black guys and sing the gospel or yeah. something. And, and, and the same way, you know, he did Las Vegas at a time when most rock uh, stars were not they had wanted nothing to do with las vegas but elvis kind of didn't care what the image of las vegas was he wanted to entertain he wanted to go back on stage he wanted to entertain as many people as he could so he goes on stage in the new international hotel in las vegas uh, a showroom twice as big as any other in las vegas and you know he he got everybody into that he he got the old rock fans because he was doing his old rock and roll numbers from the 50s and he was doing suspicious minds and he was doing uh, you know big ballads and old are you lonesome tonight you know he right. was doing everything i think he wanted to bring everybody together you know the beginning of the later stuff with like the 2001 song at the beginning oh. the drums beating and everything you guys familiar with that the the, the orchestral yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 the big it was just like uh, i just i don't know i love that um yeah, and I think it's weird. I, I think we need time. Everyone needs time to. Once you get time away, then you appreciate a little more. I think yeah. Elvis died in a weird kind of. 1977 was sort of the bottom of this country's aesthetic. Like it just was a weird time for cars, yeah. for clothing, for architecture. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, every adult. Who, anyone who was an adult in 1977, if you find a picture of yourself as an adult in 1977, you'll wince. Because the car you're leaning against is a piece of shit. Your hair's fucked up. The house is a, a, got an avocado, yeah. burnt orange kitchen. Like everything was a mess. Same, in same with Elvis. I mean, in those mids, in the mid 70s, he had the white suits were getting more and more ridiculous. He was, he was wearing a cape, you know, the 2001 uh, theme music, the bombastic shows and Elvis gaining weight. He looked as bad as he ever did. And that's, I'm afraid, what people kind of remember because those are the years. Those are the last years of Elvis. And we remember the the sad Elvis. <laughs> How many years was he playing Vegas consistently? Well, from 69 uh, on to about to 76, he was doing it twice a year. Four weeks at a time. He cut it back to two weeks what, later. What kind of money in those days would he walk out of there with for a four week? Four weeks he Vegas? would get for his first uh, show in '69. He got a hundred thousand a week, and that was the top. Uh, that was what Sinatra was getting in in uh, Vegas, and he quickly got bumped up to one hundred twenty-five thousand a week. Now you know it doesn't sound like that much today, but and he had to pay <laughs> the backup singers. And he had two backup singing groups, uh, male and female. The Jordanaires probably one. It was not the Jordanaires no, because not. the Jordanaires were too busy in Nashville doing session work. Oh, really? So he used this group, this gospel group called the Imperials, who were very good. And his female kind of sole backup group were uh, the Sweet Inspirations, whose lead singer was Sissy Houston. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And and he had to pay them out of his... Whitney Houston's aunt? Or mom? Mother. 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 Yeah. Oh, she Dion has an aunt. Is the aunt right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and also, I mean, he got a picture. So by the time he got to toward the end in Vegas, he was making what a week? Well, it was, it, it probably wasn't, uh, it was somewhere between 150, 200,000. He was still not, you know, making 
gigantic. Well, but you can buy in 19, you know, 76, you buy any house you want in the San Fernando yeah. Valley for a hundred and ten thousand dollars and i mean just about any he was plus he was of course touring and making huge money around the country and and he was making plenty of money (laughs) is he where is he in the uh posthumous uh money making world he's making i mean mean, his estate is good for x amount every every Uh, single year i guess i i don't know the figures but (laughs) i uh, think he's still number one forbes publishes his list every year of dead celebrities mm -hmm. top earning chris can look at michael jackson must have popped up uh, popped up there for a year or two or something Mm -hmm. i'm sure he's towards the top the uh you know because the estate isn't making money off the recordings um there that's why you see they're they're trying to make they're making money off of graceland and and all the stuff that goes on down there and they're making money off these movies mm-hmm. uh you know the documentary a couple documentaries about elvis and now uh the, the Baz lerman movie that's coming up so uh they're very active in in maintaining the legacy and the um you know michael uh, flow michael, of money. michael jackson made 400 million last year is that all elvis made 40 oh enough. Wow. Ar- okay. arnold palmer <laughs> made, it's a lot made of drinks. 35 million. I, I want to say this to uh, all the Dumbos who, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, Bernie Sanders, if you're listening, <laughs> and all of your ilk. When you do that thing where you go, a professional athlete makes ten million dollars a season, and school teachers, that yeah, they only make. I just fuck you. Michael Jackson made four hundred million. <laughs> From the He's grave. dead. He's dead. Most of these teachers are alive. <laughs> Most of them, Most. and they're not LA Unified, not from North Hollywood High where I went, but m- many <laughs> are yeah. majority. Hearts beating, still moving with <laughs> under their own power, and <laughs> getting. He should instead of using athletes, he should use dead celebrities. Yeah, yeah. because uh, that's the point. It, it's one okay. You get ten million bucks to dribble a basketball, but you got to suit up and get out there. Yeah, you got to break a sweat. It's yeah. not like it's not like MJ's working working hard. <laughs> It's not like anyone in the NBA oh. made four hundred million last I'm year. Close. So there you go. So there's a new example. Yeah, these dead people <laughs> laying around doing nothing, doing nothing, get more than a school teacher because that is the ultimate. You know, like I said yeah. putting a ball through a hoop yeah. or catch hitting a baseball. Still some movement yeah, involved. They stand with that. up. Uh, Bob Marley, twenty three mil. Wow. Uh, Charles Schultz, thirty four. Oh, this is the lesson order. Yeah, sorry. I, I got we got Michael at the top at four hundred mil. Uh, Jeez, ten times El- what Elvis pulled in. Well, I think that'll cool off. I mean, oh, I'm, wow. I'm guessing because Elvis died in seventy yeah. seven. You know, I think it'll. I, I think it's been dead for ten years, man. Um, that's true. Uh, Arnold Palmer, uh, Charles Schultz, uh, Bob Marley, and Doctor Seuss. It's a, that's a well rounded yeah. list, it's, man. It's, there's no Quite one in club. between. No one in between Michael Jackson and Elvis, or. Okay. No. So wow. Elvis is number two. Okay. <laughs> that's that's it. I didn't know that. I didn't. I'm learning. But check back with us in uh, f- fifty years or forty forty seven years or whatever calendar. whatever hell it is, and we'll see where we're at. The only one that's going to still be in the top five is Dr. Seuss. That guy's the books are timeless. Yeah. I know. Uh, yes. A uh, quick question about the Colonel. When we were talking about him. I've heard very very strange theories about this, and finally, someone who could probably just answer it, and we could move on. Mm-hmm. Elvis never toured internationally, right? Yes. And that was because of the Colonel. Why? The Colonel uh, immigrated from the Netherlands back in the I guess the thirties, and uh, apparently illegally, and he didn't have a passport. I mean, the guy he was afraid to go overseas because he, he didn't have a passport. Now. And that's why he always made excuses for Elvis not touring overseas. Elvis really wanted to tour overseas. And imagine in the 70s when he was getting bored with Las Vegas and with touring in the U.S., what he would have done overseas. Oh, my God. He was you know, known all over the world. The colonel would always make excuses, security problems, whatever. But he was hiding that he just had his passport problems. Okay. Now, the colonel could have <laughs> – you know, go to the government and At say, you know, point. we'd like to get Elvis overseas. Maybe you could do something about this. Uh, but he never did. Well, wow. he uh, he did Elvis when he was in the army was overseas. Right. Oh, sure. But not. But performing. but not performing. I no. get it. Yeah. 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 You didn't have to go with him. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me hit. 